What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Tuesday, January 16th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat. Stand up. Here are your top headlines. First up, winter freeze cuts U.S. natural gas output immensely. Hopefully everyone is staying warm right now. Next up, BlackRock scoops up energy infrastructure giant GIP. I will then quickly cover uh, what happened in the oil and gas markets today and opine um, on a new um, Talos Energy strategic acquisition of Quarter North Energy, um, specifically in that offshore area. Um, Guys, it's going to be a great show. As always, I am Michael Tanner. Stuart Turley is out with a sickness that would have killed an average man. He's still alive, so that's great. Um, luckily, he's above average, so um, we'll see him back in the chair tomorrow. Um, but let's go ahead and dive in, guys. First story, winter freeze cuts at U.S. natural gas output. Um, for everybody who, who who's in the Midwest right now, I'm sure you are experiencing the the the, the quote unquote deep freeze um, that's going on right now. I'm here in Dallas. It's only 11 degrees, so it's not horrible. People here are are, are a little ridiculous, but sub zero temperatures in much of the United States have frozen gas wells, leading to a drop in production to the lowest levels in eight months, according to Reuters, citing local data. This report also demand added that demand for electricity on the other hand was heading for a record high in some states notably the one i sit in which is texas the grid later there ERCOT, um had issued a conservation um call for monday on expectations that demand will break last summer's record here's that quote out of air uh, ERCOT. operating reserves are expected to be low monday morning due to the freezing temperatures record-breaking demand and unseasonably low wind they got to throw that last part in there um for all of our renewables folks unseasonably low wind it's what happens when there's no wind unfortunately the turbines don't spin um Reuters also cites some data from LSEG. Its market research unit was suggested that demand for natural gas, including exports, could hit 164.6 billion cubic feet today, rising to a further 171.9 BCF um, on Tuesday. Both figures would be record breaking. In North Dakota, we saw gas production was down somewhere around 700 to 800 million cubic feet a day, while oil production had declined by somewhere around 250 to 280,000 barrels of oil per day. Absolutely unbelievable. Ironically, we did see, you know, futures prices didn't hold up great, but we did see spot prices, specifically that Henry Hub spot price, surge by 400% um, over the weekend, um, hitting about $17 per British thermal unit pound. That compares about $3 mm BTU that is currently what's kind of getting traded on right now. Um, absolutely incredible what's going on. I, I mean, it comes out to say, um, you know, you can put up the, the the tweet from David Blackman. I mean, I mean, this says it all right now. You've got 0% wind going on. That's never going to help. You also have 0% solar. It is at 530 in the morning, so... It's, it's a little bit of a, uh, a smoke and mirrors there, but absolutely unbelievable. Natural gas, even with being frozen, is saving the day. Hope everybody this morning took a warm shower and thanked your local oil field worker. Next up, BlackRock scoops up energy infrastructure giant GIP. Absolutely incredible, guys. Investment management giant BlackRock has just gone ahead and struck a deal today to acquire uh, Global Infrastructure Partners GIP. Um, for $12.5 billion in preparation of an expected surge in worldwide infrastructure needs. This is the quote. I mean, this is absolutely scary, guys. We are going to decarbonize the world. The amount of capital and infrastructure is going to be very necessary. Larry Fink, our favorite um, CEO, told investors on Friday, um, you know, I mean, what, what's hilarious is this is his other quote. Infrastructure is a $1 trillion market forecast to be one of the fastest going segments of the private market. So they're, you know, it's sleight of hand. They, t- they wave their hand up front and say, no, 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 we're doing this because of climate change. And we need to make sure that everybody is decarbonized and blah, blah, blah. Then they sneak in there. Wow. Really what we're discovering is an infrastructure is a trillion dollar market. It's one of the fastest growing private markets of all time. We're going to go ahead and invest in it because we feel like we're going to make money. So let's let, again, let's be very clear. Why are they making this investment? They're, they're telling you they're making it because of climate change and decarbonization and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. They're doing this to make money. They understand the amount of capital that's going to flow into infrastructure in general, regardless of whether or not it's for 
climate change or not. Grid updates, that's just updating the grid. All the other stuff that's in, you know, the porculus bill, as Stu would like to say, the Inflation Reduction Act, all of that stuff. It, it, BlackRock's got its checkbook out and says, money, please, money, please. Yes, we'll sign up. Give us checks. Give us checks. We'll do this. It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, Larry Fink also in this in this press release cited greater role in private capital. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you do think that, Larry Fink. I'm sure Larry Fink does think that. Private capital will play a greater role uh, in the infrastructure space, given the rise of public deficits and the sheer amount of capital required to modernize the digital world and advance energy independence. I love how they say energy independence and energy transition, because now, OK, even if we end up on natural gas, that's better because we're independent. I mean, the sleight of hand that's going on right now. And I mean, what's hilarious is what they're doing right now is they're evaluating whether or not we think these large oil and gas mergers that took place are happening. The, the, the funny part is what they should be doing, what they should be doing is looking at how BlackRock is going around swooping up all of the companies that theoretically could benefit from things like the Inflation Reduction Act. There's where the FTC needs to be involved, not figuring out if Chevron buying Hess is going to give Chevron more market control. Newsflash, it's not. You know what's going to give Chevron more control? The more regulations you put on it because they're the only ones can handle it. I'm not going to get down that road again, but... It's funny how we just see these companies like BlackRock, they continue to swoop up more and more companies and they say, oh, it's for decarbonization. No, 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 no. It's for profits. This is familiar territory. Remember, BlackRock is one of the largest investors, not only in a lot of the top EMP companies. We won't talk about that. Forget I mentioned that. What they are attempting to do is investing more in that infrastructure space. They own a piece of Saudi Aramco's gas pipeline subsidiary, and they also have a direct interest in the Abu Dhabi National Oil Com Company. Thank goodness for BlackRock helping us decarbonize. Let's move over to finance, guys, which I think was a little bit of a uh, of a shocking move today, specifically when when we talk about what happened with the overall markets. We did see um, with you know uh, the fifteenth being MLK Day, we did not necessarily. Um, have S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. The overall stock market was closed. Futures were open, though. We did see crude oil um, open, uh, gap upwards a little bit. We opened at about 72, 73, kind of where we trade right now for the spot price. We did see us uh, uh, down uh, to somewhere around uh, 71.15, mainly off the back of, 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 of some kind of weak, I mean, everything right now is being driven by the conflict of what's going on in the Middle East. We saw over the weekend, we saw the the, the U.S. attack some of the Houthis um, in, in Yemen. Today, some of that stuff has kind of, we've crawled back a little bit in order to, you know, we, we were less hawkish. But but really, a lot of what they're seeing with these swings of the market has, a, has more to do with the kind of the geopolitical tension and risk that's being priced in. On the natural gas side, as I mentioned, we saw... Prices for spot prices over the weekend spike up to $17. But really what we're seeing on the futures market is actually a forecast for a little bit of a warmer January, which happened to actually drive prices down. We are at about $3.40 per MMBTU. We're now seeing that at about $3.08, mainly, again, off the back of that um, um, future uh, updated uh, forecast uh, that, that's going to be a lot warmer, which unfortunately... Um, is going to have a, a larger effect on prices, specifically that future price going forward. But the only other thing that I saw today um, was Talos Energy. They're going to go ahead and, and, and announce an acquisition of Qatar North Energy. Um, this is a privately held U.S. Gulf of Mexico exploration um, with ownership in several Pacific fields. Um, again, it's about 30,000 BOE per day. Um, they added about $1.7 billion um, of proved reserves. Now, that's a PV10, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, they've got a bunch of synergies that are expected um, to save about $50 million, a.k.a. layoffs. So we're unfortunate for people there. They paid about $965 million in cash, so uh, pretty good from a, uh, um, um, uh, from a strategy standpoint. Um, you know, this is uh, Talos CEO Tim Dunn. Our Duncan, today's announcement marks one of the most significant milestones to be built a large scale offshore exploration company. Um, you know, they have multiple deep water, they have a big deep water portfolio, which is where Talus is trying to get to. So um good for them for for linking up. We 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 may go ahead and see this um on a uh on a deal spotlight here soon. But that's really all I have, guys. Hopefully, Stu feels better. You will see us back in the chair tomorrow. Um, but we'll let you get out of here, guys. As always, news and analysis you just heard. 
world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. Hit the description below, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank <laughs> you.